All right, here's round two. This is my Bubba Fett. Uh, this is going out to a commission that I just finished. It just needs to be weathered a little bit by the new owner. And I'm ready to install the T-Visor. Usually set it on some foam. Uh, it tends to get hot sometimes when you have to reheat the, uh, the acrylic. So it's always best to have something that's cushy. So if you have to push on it really hard, applying pressure uh, to get the visor to seat properly, uh, you don't want to indent the, um, the paint or anything like that or the surface. Sometimes the surface can be a little tacky, um, especially if you're doing it just after you've painted it. Um, I just sealed this this morning. This is um, mid afternoon. So the paints had plenty of time to dry. So I don't, I'm not worried about anything, but anyway, just in case, have it on something soft, that way you can uh, avoid any kind of impressions. And have to redo the whole helmet, which is not fun. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to heat the visor, just a standard acrylic, um, 16th inch thick visor. Looks really thin there, but it's actually kind of thick. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Start with my little Wagner. It's got a high and low. I always set it on low. It's always hot enough for me. Um, I'll start in the center and then I'll work my way out. I want to center the bend first. So that way as I apply pressure on the ends, I don't fold it. In other words, I don't put too much pressure on it where it actually wants to fold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just apply a light pressure. Basically just let your hand rest on it till you feel it bow a little bit and then start applying heat. As the acrylic gets hot enough, you'll feel it relax and it'll start to give. And at that point, you'll know that you've applied enough heat. So at that point, just move down. So it's starting to relax a little bit. I don't have to put nearly as much pressure on it and it starts to fold. So what I'm gonna do now is just move down the top of the T-visor. Still applying some pressure. Sometimes you may have to slide your hand down a little further. Like right here, I've gotten it pretty hot, so it's kind of wanting to put a really good kink in it, which you don't want. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. You just want to get it hot enough. So when you set it inside your helmet, it will conform to all the little highs and lows and just characteristics of that particular helmet. Um, most helmets are probably rotocast or slush cast, which means neither, no two helmets are ever alike. Um, when the plastic starts to kick, it can kick it at any point on the helmet. Typically it'll start kicking wherever there's a little bit thicker area on the helmet because it's generating more heat and it tends to just want to stack up on each on itself. So. The thicker the plastic, the hotter it gets, the quicker it sets up right there. So, all right, so I've got a nice little bend going on. So what I'm gonna do now is just apply some more heat to it. I want it to be really flexible. So when I push it in there, it should seat pretty well. Now, once you put it in there, because of the helmet is usually room temperature, it'll cool the acrylic, acrylic pretty fast. And sometimes it'll, it'll make the acrylic um, kind of draw in and at that point when it's in the helmet you'll just need to apply more heat that's where it gets touchy because if it's a painted helmet as soon as you start heating that plastic up it'll it'll bubble your paint or it'll just heat it to the point where it gets tacky hence the foam um, it will help slightly on putting any impressions in there but obviously if you get it hot enough and you press on it long enough even the foam will leave an imprint. So either way, try to get it hot enough here so that way you don't actually have to use the heat gun inside the helmet any more than you have to. But I always have to use it just a little bit. The reason I use the gloves, um, first of all, the acrylic gets really hot. So it's always better to have something between you and the hot acrylic. And using hot glue, as always, you're gonna get hot glue on you no matter what. But it also helps too, um, it's a triple threat. Uh, it's a barrier between the heat, a barrier between the hot glue, and it keeps you from putting a million fingerprints on the acrylic. And the acrylic wants to pick up 
everything. All right, so it's hot enough. I should be able to do a dry run. Um, you don't want to slide it in there around any more than you have to. The acrylic will scratch. Not a bad fit. I can feel it where it's kind of high in a couple spots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with just a little more heat. This will make your hot glue take a little longer to set, but it's worth it. Um, when you look at the front of the helmet and you don't see a lot of gaps between the, the plastic helmet and the acrylic visor, it just makes it look that much more finished. Even if it does have gaps, you really can't see it unless you absolutely just get the helmet, take it off and just twist it at different angles and look at it. Uh, for the most part, you, you just never notice it. But for me, I just like it to, I don't know, I, I just like it for it to fit as tight as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bead of hot glue in the center. And I'll wait for that to dry. And then I will move up the visor. You're usually doing it about an inch or two at a time. That's the hardest part about it, is just getting the visor hot enough to where it will bend quickly but not bend too much. Wondering, yes, I do have my Bubba shirt on. Fit for life. Every now and then, as you're applying the glue, take your helmet, spin it around, and double check to make sure that the glue hasn't traveled underneath the visor towards the front of the helmet. Um, and you'd be surprised at how quick that glue will travel. As thick as it is, it, it still, it's, it just moves like lightning. And always where you don't want it to be, but never where you need it to be. All right, the plastic, the acrylic's trying to spring up on me just a little bit. I don't know if you can see it right here. But it's trying to spring up on me. Is I'm gonna apply some heat to help that relax. The glue doesn't have a lot of tensile strength when you first put it in there, so it can kind of pop up. And if you don't know it, then it'll leave that big gap in front of the visor. And by the time you've moved around the visor and you check it again, and you see the big gap and you're like, crap. Crap and gap. Yep. Real fast three times. All right, there again, be mindful. This is a painted helmet. So if yours is painted, you don't want to keep that heat on it any more than you have to. So better to err on the side that it's not quite enough instead of too much and ruining your paint job. For the most part, that's the only time you'll ever see me cry is when my paint job gets ruined. Or if my dog chews on my helmet. That sucks. So I've applied glue to the edge uh, about an inch or two at a time. See, that's wanting to pop up on me, so you gotta always gotta be careful. All right, so I'm gonna check the front of the visor to make sure the glue hasn't traveled any. Um, so everything seems to be seating nicely, so I will move on to the under, under lip or the under part of the T-Visor now. If you do get glue on your visor, like I'm fighting right now, are these little streamers that you get. Don't worry about it, Windex works really well. Um, the hot glue is not necessarily a permanent bond, it's a really good strong bond. If it just gets little light pieces on the, on the visor itself, um, they'll typically wipe off fairly easy with Windex. Touch the glue with your gloves or your hand, and then you inadvertently touch the acrylic visor, um, it will wipe off. Uh, best to let it go ahead and harden up and get cool, so that way the uh, Windex will, will cut it a little easier. Whenever you're doing the, um, the vertical part, 
of the visor or any really any other part of the visor um, I tend to try to tilt the, vi the helmet away from the front so if you're in the back you know tilt it back if you're on the right side like I am right now tilt it to the right um, there again it keeps that glue from traveling and it seems to do it fairly easy so all right well that looks like that's about it Bubba Fit is done. This is how you put your T visor in. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout. I am working on a bow caster right now. Uh, plus, I'm also finishing up my Bubba Fit as we speak uh, via the Denon helmet. Uh, great group of guys over there. And I've got a few small projects. One of them is my uh, zombie Bubba Fett, which I'm working on. And a few other uh, variants for a lot of the guys over at the, uh, the Mark World. So anyway, keep checking back. Thank you for watching. If you like it, if you don't, eh, you know, it'll get better. Just bear with me. Um, come back. We'll do more. Thanks.